Welcome to this October 17th edition of CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus. Happy to see you this Thursday, exactly two weeks from Halloween. Our first topic today is a weather event. It's not a classic nor'easter. It could be a bomb cyclone. Whatever its formal designation will be, it's a system so powerful that it's causing problems all over the U.S. Northeast, and it came up quickly. Bomb cyclones start as low-pressure weather systems. The lower the pressure, the more powerful the storm. When a system's pressure changes quickly, dropping 24 millibars in 24 hours, the rapidly intensifying storm has undergone a process called bombogenesis. It has become a bomb cyclone. And that's what the system along the U.S. eastern seaboard was expected to do. A CNN meteorologist said it would have the same low pressure as a Category 1 hurricane. What could that mean for the region? Powerful winds blowing faster than 39 miles per hour and possibly up to 60 are a potential threat from New York City to Portland, Maine. Heavy rain anywhere from 2 to 6 inches were forecast for the northeast, and all of this could last through Thursday. Flight delays and cancellations were expected. Game 4 of the American League Championship Series was postponed. It's in New York between the Yankees and the Houston Astros, and they had to wait until at least Thursday for their fourth matchup. This storm is the second big one to hit this area in a week. The last one brought heavy waves, beach erosion, and flooding to the East Coast. And while this week's storm isn't expected to bring as much snow as a classic nor'easter typically does, except maybe for a small part of upstate New York, many of its other characteristics are the same. A nor'easter occurs within the most crowded coastline of the United States, the Northeast, and they can occur any time of year but are most common between the months of September and April. That's when weather conditions are prime for a nor'easter. You start with a low. It's going to travel from the southeast to the northeast and intensify. Nor'easters are strongest around New England as well as the Canadian Maritime Provinces. Now we have very warm water in the Gulf of Mexico and all around the coast of Florida. It's going to warm the air above it and that warm air is going to clash with very cold air coming in from the north. Now nor'easters carry winds out of the northeast at about 58 miles per hour or more. And keep in mind, the wind direction out of the northeast is what defines a nor'easter. It's also going to cause beach erosion as well as coastal flooding and very, very rough ocean conditions. Now not all nor'easters have snow, but some of the most memorable ones have dumped lots of it. A struggle for space is taking place between electric scooters and the cities they cruise through. They're intended to help people easily make short trips through busy cities without having to get in their cars and fight traffic. And on the plus side, many riders have found them effective at addressing the last mile problem, the trip from the subway, bus stop, or parking garage to the final destination. But one downside is that many of the scooters aren't lasting long enough for investors to get a good return, so their future's in doubt. And they launched so quickly in so many places that lawmakers, businesses, and the scooter companies themselves are all playing catch up to define where, when, and if the machines can be ridden. When they're on the sidewalks, critics have complained that they clutter narrow spaces and are dangerous to pedestrians. When they're on the streets, they're slower than cars and can be dangerous to their riders. Different cities have different rules regarding scooters, and some companies are even testing self-driving scooters. But the point of this would be that the scooter could move and park itself when someone wasn't on it, so it doesn't wind up in the way of pedestrians or traffic. Electric scooters rented via apps are flooding city streets. Okay, let's say we want to get this one for you. So you just have to scan the QR code that is here. QR code right yeah. there. And then you have to give a first push, first kind of and then you're good to go. The scooters top out at 15 miles per hour. They cost a dollar to rent, 15 cents per minute to ride, and use the same lithium-ion batteries your phones and tablets do. We raised $135 million. $135 million line yeah. was raised. Uh, in like a, in a year and a half, so it's pretty, pretty good. That's a lot of capital being injected into this exactly. market. The cash is crucial because Lime is waging a bitter block-by-block -block battle for scooter supremacy. So really the, the goal of BIRD is to reduce uh, car traffic and trips. And people have been trying to find ways to get Americans out of cars for a long time, and, and we think BIRD can have a big impact. The startups leave them on streets often without city approval, and the apps allow you to discard the scooters pretty much anywhere. 
Residents say they litter sidewalks and pose a danger to pedestrians. Cities haven't really, uh, you know, they didn't really kind of see, and it would have been hard to see this, this wave of electric scooters coming. And so there's really not a lot, a lot of laws around the electric scooters yet, and so we're working with them. We're actually supportive of regulation. Well, there's definitely a buzz riding these. It's really cool to be whizzing past the pedestrians and being able to see above everybody else. But with that speed, you can also feel the risk, especially when you're in the streets and you feel a bus go past you. You can really feel your mortality. The most important advice I have for getting on an e-scooter is knowing when to jump off an e-scooter. Sorry. <laughs> Second trivia, which U.S. president officially opened the Empire State Building by pressing a button to turn on its lights? Woodrow Wilson, Warren G. Harding, Calvin Coolidge, or Herbert Hoover? In 1931, President Hoover hit a button in Washington, D.C. to turn the New York City landmarks lights on. Including the land it was built on, the Empire State Building cost just under $41 million to construct during the Great Depression. The cost of its recent four-year renovation, more than $160 million. But it is a major tourist attraction. About four million people visit the building every year to travel up to its observatories and gaze at the city below. And that's worth about $130 million every year to the skyscraper. It's changed a lot, at least internally, since the Art Deco landmark opened in 1931, and the new renovations are intended to make it feel as modern as possible. Welcome to the new 102nd floor of the Empire State Building Observatory. We are here on the opening day uh, of a project which has been going on now for, for four years. The project started four years ago, and we thought the project was going to be very simple and straightforward. The project grew, uh, and as it grew, it grew into the museum exhibit uh, that we have today, and included renovations of the second floor, the 80th floor, 86th floor, and now the 102nd floor. So it used to be on the 102nd floor that you'd come up in an elevator and you'd see a perimeter of, of windows which would start just about here. You had really a step on which you had to step and some barriers to access of the view. So now we're looking at complete floor to ceiling. All of the walls in this entire space have been blown out. You see the original beams. And then we've got this incredible glass elevator which comes up into a glass shaft. We want the observatory and the views here and the experience here to meet the 21st century and beyond. If NASA succeeds in returning astronauts to the moon in 2024, here's a look at what they'll be wearing. The agency unveiled two very different looks recently. The white one is designed for when space travelers go outside to bounce along the moon's south pole. The orange one is what they'll wear when launching into space and returning to Earth. NASA says the suits will give astronauts more mobility, though you can see it's still more limited than, say, a business suit. They'll be more expensive, too. The originals cost around $22 million. Now, some might have a Prada with that. They or may think that Lacoste is very expensive. But not that Armani spacesuits will be made, and if these are just the first and beginning of a decline of common space projects, who's to say they go to yay extremes when there's a ton of possibilities in interstellar fashion? I'm Carl Azus for CNN. <laughs> <laughs>